Philosophical Show Up. Today's October 30th, 2020. And I received a message from Jesus at 1 to 4 a.m. this morning. And I'm going to read it in a minute. Let me just say prayer. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Yeshua. We rebuke the coronavirus in the name of Jesus, Yeshua. We rebuke evil in the name of Jesus, Yeshua. We pray for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for your will to be done in America. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we thank you, Father, for giving us your Holy Spirit during these times that we're in. Um, this is what he gave me. Every life that's part of my kingdom matters. I left my throne in heaven to come down and save my people from a world of corruption and evil's influence. My kingdom does reign on the earth, and I will return to claim back my earth from the evil one who stole it from me. I will raise up my people as the Father pours his wrath down on evil. You are mine, and I am yours. We are one, and we walk together every day. We must all pray. Fear not, for I truly have overcome the world, and you are part of my kingdom on the earth. Stand up for what is right, and do not let the enemy squelch who you are. Love is the power that separates you from the tares. Their goal is self. Your goal is loving others and one another. Help me to bring my kingdom back to life. Walk with me every day and let go of all this worldly sorrow. There is true joy for all who seek my face and see truth. I love you with an everlasting love, and will you show it to all you meet? so they can witness our heart. Hold on to my hand and never let go, for the times you are in are not meant to be peaceful, for I have come to separate the wheat from the tares, and evil will rise up where it can. Look to me as you mature into my beautiful bride. You are so very blessed, and I will never leave you or forsake you. I love you, Yeshua. The King of Glory is coming for his church, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, as you are molded into our image. Love prevails always. Love Yeshua, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the King of Glory. And um, that's what he gave me. There's a couple things I want to say before I forget. One, I just want to let everybody know we're putting a well in up the hill in the safe zone. Um, which is a big deal. So that's going to get done in a week or so. Um, make sure you vote for Trump on the 3rd, November 3rd. Don't make an excuse not to go out and vote Trump in. This is a critical election that we're in. And I want to say another thing. It's not Trump's fault that this country is divided. And Joe Biden, all, all they do is try to blame Trump for this. This country has been divided for years. For years. The Democrats and Republicans. That's the way it's been. The reason there is so much conflict now is because the time frame that we are in, evil is looking to take over the throne. I'm going to say that again. Evil is looking to take over the throne. Therefore, all the Nephilim spirits, the demonic entities, whatever you want to call them, are rising up and taking over people to fulfill their agenda. That's why they say things that are so reprobate that doesn't even make sense. Because they are reprobate. The Nephilim are reprobate. They have one agenda to take over. And they have missions that they're given by Satan himself to accomplish. And they don't care if they make the person look like an idiot as long as they accomplish their mission. And their mission has been to get Trump out of office from the get-go. That's why they made the Russia collusion thing up. It was all made up because they spied on Trump's camp. They were the ones that broke the law. Hillary broke the law. All those people, they lied in the courts. And they're still lying. Every time Biden gets up in front of the people of America, everything that comes out of that mouth's man is a lie. Do you see that? Those of you that are still looking to vote Democrat, do you see that? As a child of God, you should be seeing that clearly. 
through the discernment of the Holy Ghost. You cannot say you're on the side of God if you believe in things that are against God. You can't say you're for murdering of a baby and say you're a follower of Jesus. You just can't do that. It doesn't work. Because they're not one and the same. I wonder how many of them who are for abortions, if a baby was born, just born, and the mother said, I don't want the baby, kill it for me. To any one of those, kill it for me, what they would do about that. They're so quick to say, oh yeah, women's right to her bodies, abort the baby, do whatever. But when it comes down to it, that's a human being. And who has the right to take its life? Whether it's in the womb or out of the womb. There's no difference between in the womb and out of the womb. We know that in nine months a baby's born, comes out of this body, into the world as a human being. There's no, you can't di di differentiate between the time frame. We know it's a life. It's against our constitution. Absolutely is. And we've just let it slide by. And everybody says, well, we have the right to our own bodies. We do have the right to our own bodies. We absolutely do. But it doesn't give us the right to do certain things. You're not supposed to commit suicide. That's the right to your own body. You shouldn't abuse yourself. And you shouldn't murder your baby. There's another issue out there, all right? Same-sex marriage. And I get the whole thing, love and all. I, I, I get all that. The Bible specifically says that's not the way God created human beings to be. It was male and female created he them to be fruitful and multiply. Two men can't multiply. Two women can't multiply. That's how he made it to be. A woman and a man come together. They were meant to be able to come together. It doesn't work any other way. But we deemed it that same sex can marry one another. And as human beings, I guess technically we have the right to do that. I mean, who's to say we can't allow somebody to do that if they choose to do that? But then you're going down a very slippery slope there because of this reason. What if we then decide that I am in love with my dog and now I want to marry my dog? Technically, I have the right as a human being to do that. So when do we uh, stop and come up with some kind of a rationalization of what's right and what's not right? Should we start marrying human beings to animals now? A person can say, I'm in love with my dog, and I want to marry my dog. I don't want to be with another human being. I want to be with my dog the rest of my life, just me and my dog. And I want it to be a marriage. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm in love with my dog. Don't laugh at that, because that could very well be the future. Even they're, they're even going so far as to getting children involved with having sexual relations with adults and trying to justify it. There comes a line where we have to have some kind of morals, some kind of a God that we believe in who made the rules that we're supposed to follow. And this is where we have erred greatly in the world. The world. We have become our own God. We've made our own rules and our own laws, and that's what we're following. That's how we allowed abortions to take place. That's how we allowed same-sex marriages to take place. And we'll even start allowing old men to marry 10-year-old girls, which they're already doing in the Muslim countries, whatever. These things are already going on. Pedophilia, all these things are going on. We'll just get more and more perverted as we go along. And like the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so too shall it be in the end. That's what we're witnessing. 
So the fact that this country has all these reprobate minds burning cities, this has nothing to do with Trump. It has to do with the Nephilim hating his guts because he's anointed and chosen by God. Just like they hate you as a child of God. Because you're anointed by the Spirit of the Lord and they know it. And they despise us for it because we are in their way of a one world takeover government. And America is not falling in line with the one world government plan that Satan has. So he's ticked off right now. And when Trump wins this election, all hell's breaking loose. So be prepared for it and stay away from the areas where all hell's going to break loose. Trump will stop it. But the Nephilim are going to know that they failed again and their plan to take over America has, it was foiled. And it's only because of the mercy of our God and the fact that we, are, we have been praying and seeking his face about this with all seriousness. And we are coming back into the kingdom. We are waking up. You know, they met in Washington, D.C., Jonathan Kahn. And they had, they had a day, days of prayer going on. It's the awakening. We're coming back. We're rising up. It's the return. It's the return of Yeshua. And it's the return of God's people into the power and the fire in the kingdom of Almighty God. That's what we're witnessing. And that's why there was so much force coming against our president who's standing on the side of God and righteousness. And they despise him. And they want to make it that he's the one dividing the country. When in fact, it's God basically dividing the country. <laughs> because you either follow him or you follow Satan. Jesus said in the word, all right, and he said it right here. This is not a time where there's peace. He, he even says it in the Bible, I did not come to bring peace on the earth. I came to bring division between households. A mother against the daughter. A son-in-law against the father-in-law. Because he came with a message of redemption. And only those who follow him will be on his side. And all the rest of the world is going to follow Satan. And Satan's agenda, which is to do whatever he wants. That's his agenda. To follow none of the rules of God, which he didn't do in heaven. He made war against God and was hurled down. He doesn't follow the rules. So therefore, he's looking to overthrow our government. And we are the ones that are going to stop it on November 3rd. And we best do it. Because if we don't, we will be suffering the consequences. We're done. America's done. If we don't vote that man in again. Now the Lord says that he's going to win this. But if we don't do our part, the prophetic word will not come to pass. Because prophecies are given out there for us to obey them. It's like Nineveh. If they didn't repent, judgment would have fell upon them. So when, when, when he came and he told them that judgment was coming, if they didn't repent, they listened. They listened and they repented and Nineveh didn't get the judgment of Almighty God. But it didn't mean that the prophetic word was not going to happen. God gives prophetic words many times over. But they come to pass if we obey and follow what he tells us to do to bring it about. So we have to bring this about with this election. And make sure you get it out to everybody to get out and vote Trump in. This is vital. This is vital. And we need to keep praying and fasting and doing whatever we can do to kick back Satan. And remember, the other side is standing against God. This election is between good and evil for sure. Absolutely. They can call themselves Christians. They can call themselves whatever they want. You can't murder a life and say you're following Jesus. You can't go against his word and say you're following Jesus. It doesn't work. 
If you're a follower of Jesus, that means you follow him and his sayings. So I'm Lois Holder Sharp. I'll be back when he sends me back again and have a blessed day.